Hey everyone, this is Evo with Storm IT, and today we're gonna take a look at AWS CloudFront. First, I'm gonna talk a little about what CloudFront is, and then I'll take you through the whole procedure of spinning up a CloudFront distribution within the AWS Cloud console. So, what is CloudFront? Well, to explain that, I'd first like to talk a little bit about the AWS Cloud infrastructure in general. AWS infrastructure consists of these groups of data centers called regions, depicted by these yellow little circles here. Each region consists of several data centers called availability zones, and AWS claims that there should be a minimum of two availability zones in a region. As you can see, there's already quite a lot of them around the world. So now let's consider an example where, uh, say, you're running an application for sharing and distributing photos for your users. So let's say you're storing these photos in an S3 bucket, and let's say this S3 bucket is located in Ireland. But uh, your users are from all around the world, right? So what happens when they try to access their photos and pictures? Well, it takes a lot of time because, as you see, the distance is quite far, so the latency is quite high. And let's face it, today it's all about speed and ease of use and performance, so your users are not very happy about that. So how can you fix this with CloudFront? Well, CloudFront is basically a much denser network of smaller data centers around the world, or in IT terms, a content delivery network. The CloudFront data centers are called edge locations and are depicted by these little small circles here. The edge locations can cache your content for a period of time called TTL, or time to live, and thus deliver it to the end user much faster because it can bring it closer to the user. I'd also like to note that the process might be a little bit slower for the first user because when a user is requesting some content for the first time, well, the content is not cached at the edge location yet. But for the second, third, and etc. user who is requesting that same content, the delivery will be super fast. And for anyone wondering about these regional edge caches, those are basically just larger edge locations. Think of it like this. Edge locations are small and will only cache the most popular content, whereas regional caches are a bit bigger and can also store some of the less popular content for longer. Now let's take a look at the example we saw previously, but now with the use of CloudFront. So again, we have our app for sharing and distributing photos and pics, and it stores its data in an S3 bucket in Ireland. So now, when the users try to access the photos, what happens? Well, they only have to access the edge location that is closest to them, and the edge location will access the S3 bucket and pull the content from it. That is, unless it is already cached. In that case, the process is already just between the user and the edge location and it's super fast and super smooth. So that is the power of CloudFront. It brings the content closer to the user, thus bringing down latency and improving performance. And a user whose content is delivered quickly is a happy user. Now, before we jump into the hands-on, I would like to just quickly go over today's deployment architecture. So. We will have a static website inside an S3 bucket, and this website will contain a GIF. The reason for that is that I wanted to use something that will be a bit larger than just a plain static web page, because I thought that maybe that way uh, the difference between using and not using CloudFront might be a little bit more noticeable. Then, of course, there's our CloudFront distribution and our users. And between the CloudFront distribution and users is something called Route 53. For those of you who don't know what Route 53 is, don't worry about it. I will explain everything as we go. But basically, Route 53 is Amazon's DNS routing service. So when our users want to access their content, they actually access it through Route 53, which then redirects them to CloudFront. And the last piece of the puzzle is the certificate manager. 
The certificate manager serves two purposes. First, it lets us secure the whole connection via SSL certificate. And second, it lets us use a custom URL for our CloudFront resources. For example, in the hands-on demo, I, would, I will want to be using this URL instead of the default CloudFront URL, which looks like this. As you can see, this URL is very hard to remember and uh, very long and not very pretty. So we are going to be using uh, this one along with a SSL certificate manager from AWS. That's it. I hope you're looking forward to the hands-on. Let's get right to it.